Quantum of Solace is the second Daniel Craig James Bond movie and I'm very excited to give you guys my review for this movie. Be sure to check out my playlist with all my previous James Bond movie reviews as well be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get into this review. In this movie, James Bond descends into mystery as he tries to stop a mysterious organization from eliminating a country's most valuable resource. So Quantum of Solace is kind of a sequel to Casino Royale. It kind of continues some storylines and it picks up almost immediately after Casino Royale. And as a sequel to Casino Royale, it's a bit of a disappointment to say the least. I don't think it's quite as bad as a lot of people think, but it is a big step down from Casino Royale. And for me, is definitely the weakest of the Daniel Craig Bond films watching it you can definitely tell how it was impacted by the writer's strike at the time and it's quite unfortunate because watching it you could kind of see elements of a decent movie and they just weren't fleshed out enough there are times when the script the dialogue just wasn't great there are parts of the story that didn't quite make sense and it's a movie i found compared to some other ones especially in the daniel craig era it was more easy for me to just sort of zone out and then when i go back to him like what's happening again this this we got all this and it's not necessarily a mess i just think things weren't fleshed out enough that it didn't always make total sense to me there are some things that were definitely like i don't know what went what was going on there how they went from this to that like a big example of that for me was sort of midway through the movie maybe later half the movie M and Bond meet up again and M sort of having him arrested because they think he's pretty much gone rogue and he manages to escape and he runs into her in the hotel that they had met up and she's sort of on his side again when she's talking to another uh, like assistant person uh, she said watch what he's doing I trust him that sort of thing and it's like a minute ago you said you weren't sure if you trusted him and are pretty much having him arrested and relieved of duty at least temporarily and so that was like how do you go from this to that it those there's parts of that in the script that are just like uh, no and some of the dialogue wasn't great especially in the moments that those they were said in action scenes like it didn't really fit for me there were moments too that were just like I think unintentionally funny for me there are two moments like that with the villain and i'll get a bit more into the villain in a little bit the funniest for me was in the final battle when he's fighting bond and he has this axe that's just wailing around trying to hit him and he ends up hitting himself in the foot with the axe i don't know why they wrote him doing that like he's not the most muscular guy he's clearly not a fighter but it's like okay <laughs> just found it so funny like unintentionally funny and another one midway through when the villains in this car they just left the opera they're about to drive away and this one guy falls off the roof where bond was lands on the car and the villain doesn't want him lo looking at him uh because he's not one of the people that works for him and i just like that it just felt so goofy because there's nothing about this villain that felt like he was that over the top to begin with and I don't know why I think I find that more unintentionally funny than most people will but that's just me the villain overall very forgettable uh, he's got an okay plan for the overall plot of this movie but he's just so forgettable there's nothing about him that makes him stand out like Le Chiffre in the past movie part of why he stood out was Mads Mikkelsen's performance but he also had good motivation for doing what he was doing beyond just being a villain trying to scheme and take over the world and whatnot this guy just wanted a desert because he knew water was there and it would force that government to buy the water from them I guess so that was fine I guess but the villain just the performance was fine but just the way he's written is pretty forgettable and the action in this as well I think may be some of the weakest in the franchise the action pieces themselves and I'm like looking at what they're doing I think they could have been fun and very good but it was the way they were filmed it was very quick editing some shaky cam 
and it just didn't work for this James Bond movie. Like there's some other movies, like some of the Bourne films, it works, and I think it's because you have a director that knows how to handle that technique. In this, it just didn't work. It just didn't feel like James Bond style. There were some action scenes that I still thought were all right. They were entertaining enough, even though the editing still wasn't great. Like it, earlier in the movie, there's a foot chase where they're on the roof and going through tunnels. That was fine. Um, the way that action scene ended was pretty cool, actually, where they're dangling by the ropes. That was all right. But other than that, this movie, I thought, watching it, it's fine. I can watch it and be f somewhat entertained. I There's not much about where I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I'm just sort of like, I could see a better movie in it that it just wasn't able, able to be fleshed out, unfortunately. And... Yeah, that really hurt the movie. I thought Daniel Craig was still very good as Bond, and for me, his performance was part of what saved this movie, is I could watch him being Bond and enjoy it. And you could see hints of how Casino Royale had impacted his character for this movie, and you could see what they were going for, but again, I think due to the writer's strike, they couldn't flesh that out enough to have the impact they were going for. So... I think if they were able to delay this movie to deal with that strike, I don't know if there was a reason they couldn't. Maybe it would cost them more to do that. I don't know, but I wish they could have done that because, like I said, I could see ideas in there that I think it fleshed out. It could have been a decent, maybe a very good Bond film like that. Seeing how Bond's character had been impacted from Casino Royale, I do appreciate that, and I wish it could have been fleshed out a little bit more. The Bond woman in this I thought was all right. Again, I kind of wish her character can be fleshed out a little bit more, like a lot of things in this movie, but she had good motivation to be doing what she was doing, so she was kind of a compelling character. And I enjoyed her dynamic with Bond quite a bit, actually. The one aspect that I didn't need, though, was at the end when they share a kiss. Because there was nothing really at all throughout the movie that suggested any sort of romantic chemistry between the two. So it just felt very forced to me. And I've said in some other reviews, there are times when the romantic aspect of the movies, of the Bond movies, with the... Uh, Bond woman and James Bond feel very forced. This was definitely one of those. I would have been completely fine having this character there and not having any sort of romantic exchange between the two. I'm sure a lot of people still would want that because it's the traditional Bond thing to do. But there are times for me it just feels forced and not necessary. And this was one of those mo movies. It's a small moment, just one kiss at the end. But I'm like, I didn't buy into it. I would have been completely fine if it wasn't there. But yeah, that's a smaller issue for me, but overall, Quantum of Solace, I don't hate it like a lot of people do, but for me, it is definitely the weakest of the Craig era. There are parts where I'm like, I could see potential in it if it would have been fleshed out more, if they didn't have the writer's strike. I could see potential in there. I just wanted, wanted things to be fleshed out a bit more, some characters to be fleshed out a bit more, to have things make more sense, to be a bit more compelling. Uh, film the action scenes a little bit differently. There were still a few that I enjoyed watching, but I wasn't a fan of that style for this movie. So for me, overall, I would give Quantum of Solace a 60%. Not terrible by any means. I can watch and be like, yeah, it's fine. I don't hate it by any stretch of the imagination. It was just kind of disappointing, especially as a sequel to Casino Royale. So those are my thoughts on this movie. If you guys have seen it, let me know what you thought about it. As well, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And be sure to stay tuned for some more videos coming soon. And until my next video, take care, everybody.